Давай в огонь по пидоросне! Russian insurgent forces continue their assaults on Belgorod and the Kursk region, and Belgorod was under massive attack. Everyone believed that Russia would take control of the situation within 24 hours. That's not the case, and the question is why. The attack in Belgorod provokes Putin given that elections are taking place in Russia. He appears weak when he is not in control of the country. Renewed explosions in Bilhorod. Another group of Russian military relates how they were deceived by not documenting their transfer to another unit. The fighters were ultimately left with nothing. The 114th Brigade treated us like animals. It sent us on the day of the transfer at night to the Avdiivka coke plant and wanted to send us on an assault with a machine gun, with four magazines and with the bare minimum ammo. The servicemen understood that participation in the assault in such conditions was suicide. At the same time, most of the military personnel in the unit are 300. Out of the personnel of two companies of 220 people, there are about 74 to 75 people left. The fighters say that during the assault on Avdivka as part of the Veterans PMC, they faced exactly the same situation when they were left without evacuation. At the same time, some of the military personnel were left without documents, many without personal belongings. Most of the documents were looted just like the personal belongings of the guys who were left behind. Everything was looted. Even what we were given was purchased at our own expense. We have another compelling video capturing the attack on a Russian T-72 tank in Ukraine, where the tank's turret is sent soaring into the air once again. FPV operators from the 1st Assault Battalion of the 92nd Assault Brigade destroyed a Russian T-72 with FPV drones. The turret will eventually also came off. After the television interview of French President Macron, here are all the important points from the television interview of French President that he gave after French opposition leaders criticized his comments as bellicose. In particular, if Russia wins this war, Europe's credibility will be reduced to zero. Today, deciding to abstain or vote against support to Ukraine, it's not choosing peace, it's choosing defeat, it's different. If war spread in Europe, Russia would be to blame, but if we decided to be weak, if we decided today that we would not respond, it would be choosing defeat already, and I don't want that. He said it was important for Europe not to draw red lines, which would signal weakness to the Kremlin and encourage it to push on with its invasion of Ukraine. The Kremlin regime is an adversary, he said, declining to call Russia an enemy. He also said Putin making threats about nuclear strikes was not appropriate. Peace does not mean the capitulation of Ukraine, he said. Wanting peace does not mean defeat, Wanting peace does not mean dropping Ukraine, he said. Inside AM2A2 Bradley IFV of the 47th Mechanized Brigade, operating against Russian equipment and personnel in the Avdivka direction, it looks like one armored personnel carrier was destroyed. Go! 
If it weren't so macabre, you could really get the idea that Russia is now armoring its personnel carriers with people. A BTR-80 is hidden among these 13 soldiers. Around 200 Russians die in Ukraine every day. President Biden called Putin a thug. It looks like the world is finally calling a spade a spade. About time. And to continue to urge every member in this room to stand up to Vladimir Putin. He's a thug. At least 19 people were killed and 73 more injured on Friday in a Russian strike on the Ukrainian Black Sea port city of Odessa, which has come under repeated aerial attacks. Among the victims and victims are local residents, doctors, and emergency workers. The second shooting happened when emergency services provided assistance to the victims of the first strike. Prosecutor General of Ukraine Andriy Kostin wrote in a post on Facebook, saying that it was the latest information as of 5 p.m. Friday. Many of the wounded are emergency workers attending the scene of the first explosion, a deliberate attack strategy often used by Moscow's forces known as a double tap. Unfortunately, a paramedic and an employee of the state emergency service who arrived to provide assistance after the first explosion were killed as a result of the Russian missile attack. The regional governor, Ole Kuyper, said on social media earlier. And the fun is at the end. All the madhouse gathered in Russia for Putin's election. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.